So this is a continuation of the full tutorial of the Amazon Sourcer, a Google spreadsheet that actually um, helps you to source products from Amazon and find profitable products. Now, in the previous video, I actually showed you how to scrape products from Amazon using a free Chrome extension and then how to bring those products right in to the Google Sheet. And so we have URLs, for those Amazon products, we have titles and we have prices. The next major step is we want to go ahead and start finding sources of these products. Uh, however, one other thing I want you to see is that there's a Get ASINs button. When you click Get ASINs, it will actually put the ASINs um, inside of the sheet. What it's doing is to, the, the ASINs are, you have to understand that ASINs are already in the Amazon URLs. They are part of an Amazon URL so it is just extracting them out of these URLs. If you see any URL that does not retrieve an ASIN, it means that URL is not actually a product. As you can see, this is a bestsellers link or something like that. So when you use the free Chrome extension, it does pull some other things in from Amazon from that page. You have to realize that the Chrome extension just pulls whatever's on this page. So if you have links over here or links wherever else inside of here, it might just pull some extra links in there. And so some of these links are not products, okay, for whatever reason, those URLs. So, you know, it's not perfect in that way to use the free Chrome extension when pulling from Amazon. But obviously, I mean, you've got your products here. You've got tons of products here. So when you click Get ASINs, um, it will go ahead. It's telling you the number of ASINs it pulled and the last ASIN row. And it will stop at some point because um, Google has a limit on how long it will do things, uh, macros. When it's done, you can just click Get ASINs again, and it will just continue from where it left off. And I'll also show you in another video uh, how you can actually trigger it to continue. Or perhaps I might even show you here. Now, um, for sourcing, what we will do with sourcing Okay, so we simply we'll start on the first row, okay, of the sheet. And it's very simple. You just go to this Amazon scraper and sourcer menu. And by the way, if you're using a future version of the sheet, um, in previous versions I had more buttons. So some of the things that are here, they used to be buttons, but now they're on the menu because it's neater and I can add more things up here over time. So just keep that in mind. Maybe the button used to be here. Or in the future, uh, this button, for instance, could end up on a menu, just so that you know, okay? So anyway, you're on the first row, and you're going to go to Amazon Scraper and Sourcer and click on Start Sourcing. When you click on Start Sourcing, it means to start sourcing on this row where you are right now, okay? I need that to be clear. So you understand what it actually does. Now, there are actual settings that I didn't mention. As you can see, it begins to fill in some product links here. These are sources that start to show up. Okay, potential sources. I can't promise you that every product link that shows up is going to be an exact match to the pro original product on Amazon. Because it is not using barcodes. It's not using UPCs. Um, and even if it was, UPCs are not always correct on Amazon. Um, and so, you know, it's using product titles, okay? However, many of the products will match, okay? So, now, continue sourcing. Continue sourcing, don't click it now. Continue sourcing is something that you will click if this stops or when it stops, okay? What I will do is go ahead and cancel this intentionally, which is going to make it stop, just so that I can, for the purpose of demonstration, so you can see that because I canceled it, it just it stopped, right? Now, I don't need to go here and click Start Sourcing again, but I can. What I will do, it doesn't matter where I am now. All I have to do is go to Continue Sourcing. It will continue from where it left off because it, it's being written down that it's last sourced row 13. So it will continue from that row 13, and it will... Uh, continue sourcing from there it might just need a moment to do whatever it's doing which is well actually it's doing web searches um and it will keep going from there it will continue sourcing right 
Now, it's important to understand, even if it doesn't find sources, it will count that because it, it tried, right? It was there. And then it will continue, right? And it will continue going. Now, I didn't talk about the uh, settings. Um, I'll talk about them very generally. Back, basically, um, you have the maximum sources per product. I have it set to 10. That is the most sources that this will store. That's just the way I have it set. Um, and then you have what's called uh, minimum match accuracy. This means how close do you want the... It's like a rule for how similar these URLs need to be to the original product title. So when you look inside URLs, they have words, and it's just making, it's trying to see how similar these words are. And you're just telling it, hey, I want them to be at least 50% similar. And it's just to help prevent you from getting too many crazy links that have nothing to do with the original product. Okay, that's what that does. Now, then you have targeted search. Uh, I'm not demonstrating that here. This is where you want certain suppliers only. And then you'll say yes, and then you'll get to choose the suppliers. I'm not uh, doing that in this video either. I'm not demonstrating that, right? That would be kind of like an offshoot video where I'll go into like those extra things. The purpose of this full tutorial, complete tutorial, is really like so that you can basically use the system and get through and know what you're doing, all right? Um, so that is basically the process. Now, the other thing that we can talk about is this automate continue sourcing. But you have to understand what it does, okay? When you click on Automate Continue Sourcing, it will set up what is called a trigger, a timer, where 30 minutes later, after you click in this option, 30 minutes later, it will continue sourcing products. Why this is important is because Google, and I just dismissed that uh, thing uh, so of reflex, but I should have explained that to you, but I just dismissed that maximum execution is said that that was out of uh, time, okay, exceeded maximum time. That means it was running for too long, okay. Google Sheets has a limit on that. So this is why I have the continue because this will stop running on its own at some point. It just won't keep going. Now, right now, it's still sourcing, but um, because I believe this is the sourcing one that's running right here, but it will stop eventually, and when it stops... Okay, it will just stop. So when you're not here, you can go ahead and click Automate Continue Sourcing. All right, so that you can get up and walk away. So if you have, say, a 1,000 products or even just having, like, 500 products, it will keep sourcing every 30 minutes. And it's important that it's 30 minutes apart because it needs to run, stop, and then start again. Okay, so that is what um, Automate Continue Sourcing will do I can't demonstrate that without sitting here for 30 minutes so I'll just explain what it does however it is important to understand and you know what I will go ahead and automate it I will go ahead and click that because I want you to see uh, something when you do that I'm going to go to extensions and then apps script okay this is something I do need to explain to you you're gonna open up that first link okay now we're into the actual app script code that I wrote, right? These are all files, individual files. They're called files. They're just sections, but they call them files with code in them, okay? This over on the left side, this is the trigger section. When you click on the triggers, it shows you uh, automated. These are automated things that will run, okay, continuously. Uh, this is the one that was just created. When I selected automate continue sourcing it created this trigger now you could create this trigger yourself with add trigger but it created the trigger automatically and this trigger will run every 30 minutes I'm going to click on this edit button just so you can see how it looks time driven minutes every 30 minutes okay I'm going to cancel because I just it's here already okay now um, this is important to know because this will stay here and it will never go away. So at some point you may forget you may forget that it's even here. All right. And what you will do in the future when it's actually like completely done, if you come back a couple hours later or whenever and you know it's just completely done, you will go here and you will uh, you stop all sourcing. 
which I don't want to press now, but when you stop it, it will stop it from sourcing right now, and it will stop, it will remove this thing, this trigger from here, so that um, it won't keep running, okay? So stop all sourcing is the final thing that you will press when everything is done, right? But I won't do it now, because uh, I actually want it to keep going, okay? I close that app script. I actually want it to continue sourcing, so when I get to the next demo video, it will be uh, completed, or at least partially completed, so that I can show the next step in the process. As you can see, exceeded maximum execution time. Uh, I already set the automate continue, so I'm just going to dismiss that. And it doesn't matter if you don't dismiss it, it's not gonna affect anything. But I'm not gonna actually do anything. I'm just gonna walk away and I'm going to let the automated continue sourcing pick up and keep sourcing. But if you want to force uh, this thing to keep sourcing right now, sure, you can go to continue and that would force it. Uh, however, you don't really want to do that if the other automated one is still there. You don't want to do both at the same time. So you could remove it. You could go to stop all sourcing and then you could click continue sourcing if you want it to continue. Uh, but basically... I think the best thing to do is when you start, um, just to kind of, because I, I realize it's a lot, let me kind of just put it together. When you get started, you're on the first row, you go to Amazon Scraper, you click Start Sourcing. That will start, start the sourcing of the products. If you sit down, if you're going to sit here and watch it and wait for it, then you can manually click Continue when it's done. Otherwise, just immediately click Automate Continue Sourcing, and it will set up the automatic continuation of the sourcing so basically my suggestion if you have a long list of products you're going to come to the first product amazon scraper sourcer start sourcing and then you can immediately after that select automate continue and then just walk away and just wait for the process to finish so that's it for this um segment on how to actually get the product sourcing done uh go ahead and try it and then if you have questions you can always uh, or comments you can leave them below on the video or contact me directly and um, then in the following video I'll get into the next part uh, which I believe should have something to do with generating uh, the products list on the next page so um, yeah that's it again check the video description for any links to the next video or any other useful information and I hope to see you in the next training video